It's a Friday night, true. You duck out to grab some gin and a nice bottle of tonic. But when you arrive, shock, horror, the shelves are bare. Australia is battling a soft drink shortage and it all comes down to a lack of bubbles. It sounds as refreshing as it tastes. But what are we hearing and what are we drinking? Bubbly. Bubbly. <laughs> oh, the bubbles make it. So those bubbles are actually CO2 and you can feel them in your mouth, you can smell them, they go up the back of your throat, giving you that sensation of flavour. While most of us just swallow the stuff, suddenly we're also talking about it because our so-called soft drinks are actually doing it hard. No uh, soda for us scotch this weekend, unfortunately. Some stock is drying up at our major supermarket chains, leaving empty shelves and apologies. It's everything with bubbles, but it's out of the supermarket's hands. It all comes down to a shortage of CO2. Do you know at all when they're getting the um, water back? It's a national problem where they can't get um, car, the, what makes the bubbles. I'm almost 78, I've never heard of this ever. The Great Bubble Famine. Oh my goodness. Tonic water I've been looking for in Coles and Aldi for about a week and a half. Did you ever imagine that we'd have a shortage of soft drink in this country? Ah, oh, sounds a bit ridiculous. Probably a good thing though. It's actually somebody's job to ensure we can put the fizz, the bubbles or the bang in our bottles. So we're having what, flat soft drinks, flat lemonade? Well it will be flat if we don't put the bubbles in. <laughs> the bubbles go back to the 1760s and a glittering glass of water. Someone said, well wouldn't it be better if the water was like mineral springs? Along came this fella, Joseph Priestley, who invented carbonation. In the 1780s, it went commercial thanks to Jacob Schwepp. Sound familiar? Well, the rest is history. But here, the bubble has burst. Woolies, Coles and Audi say it's the little guys, home brands, etc., who are struggling. I think it just goes to show the, how fragile supermarket supply chains are. Mr Consumer Gary Mortimer. Once there's a, an out-of-stock of, of an active ingredient, uh, it can have an impact across the entire supply line. The Peak Bubble Body, the Gas Association, warned of a fragile supply chain last year. And it turns out only two companies in Australia put the CO2 into our refreshments, the bulk done by BOC. At first I was a little surprised about the CO2 shortage. Professor Perrin Cook from the School of Chemistry at Melbourne's Monash University. So the way they get them in the drink is you put CO2 into the bottle at high pressure. So the sort of pressure that you're talking about is around 20 psi. And so again, for reference, a car tyre is around 20 to 30 psi. He says while the process hasn't changed, competition for CO2 has. Traditionally, CO2 for beverages came from fertiliser production. So rather than being a waste product, government programs incentivise a value on CO2 and that value is actually burying the CO2. So there's a slight competition there for actually CO2 being used, uh, i.e. buried in, in carbon sequestration rather than um, being used in drinks. So we're actually importing it. I think the main issue is uh, the, the, the shipping to Australia. BOC told us it's prioritising supply for critical medical, safety and water treatment customers. Before you have a not so welcome toilet paper shortage flashback, our supermarkets say they'll ensure we'll have something to drink. Better yet, another industry reports it's holding up. I don't think uh, you know, beer drinkers should be too concerned this weekend. Let's hope this fizzer doesn't last long. Well, you enjoy your bubbles, yeah? Thank you. Cheers. Well, as long as they don't run out of gin is what I say.